Hey everybody, this is Tony Hibbard with the Assisted Band Director, and I have got another literature vid video for you guys, and this is going to follow kind of the same criteria as the beginning band, um, beginning band video. This one is just the next grade level up. So here are 20 plus grade one and grade five band pieces. And before I get into this, the grade levels are very subjective. Each state has their own list. Each publisher has their own list. And it is it is not uncommon to see pieces that are in completely different um, grade levels that, that vary ridiculously. Um, but anyways, here um, is the criteria that I used. I have performed or worked on these pieces already. Um, there are a lot of pieces that I have worked on, but I have never performed because I feel that they are valid to work on and maybe we couldn't fit it into a performance or some of these we worked on, you know, right as everything shut down for COVID. And then when we came back, we had a completely different band. So we never actually got to perform any of that stuff. Um, the ranges are within an octave or very close to. There's a couple where it stretches, you know, just a little bit, which is something you want to do in this in this grade range anyways, to start stretching the ranges of your students both up and down. Clarinets are mostly below the break or minimally over the break. Um, the second, if it's split into two parts, is usually always below. And if it is above, it, you know, uh, speaking clarinet terms, it's going to be like E, D, and C. You know, it's going to stay above the break. It's not going to be jumping up and down. Um, low brass and reeds are mostly in octaves or unison. Uh, sometimes they'll split into fifths, which is, again, building independence that you want in this grade level. Uh, so in no particular order, actually they're in alphabetical, but this is not like number one is the best piece. Here we go. First one. African Festival by Quincy Hilliard, Chuck Elledge, and Bruce Pearson. This piece is in three flats. It comes with supplemental lessons and warm-ups. When I say supplemental le lessons, it goes into like the culture of Africa and has a lot of background information on it. Um, it has lots of, uh, it's supposed to say development with the melody, um, and everybody gets it at some point. It does have the dotted quarter eighth note, so you want to make sure that your students are familiar with that and that you have taught that. Um, if you have a large percuss percussion section, this is the, um, a good piece to look at. It has seven different percussion parts, and you'll probably need at least six. Now, with all of these pieces, I say it's playable with X number of players. Obviously, you want to cover all the parts if it's possible, but sometimes it's just not possible. And I've, I've kind of, you know, looked through to see, you know, can the person playing the agogo bell, the agogo bells, also play the kabasa? And, um, and I probably mispronounced both of those, so percussionists can go ahead and come after me. That's fine. Um, but I, I will have a suggestion for how many, how many percussion players you need for each piece. Uh, the flute, clarinet. Alto and trumpet are split into two parts. This is also in the teaching music through performance. That's what TMTP stands for and is in beginning band volume one. And it is also in the developing rehearsal techniques through active listening by Andrew Boysen Jr. If you are not familiar with that book, you need to, you need to check that out. That was a big game changer for me. Um, it was in one of the five books videos I did, but I think I'm going to do a video specifically on that book because that is a book that I think everybody should have. The next one, All Ye Young Sailors by Pierre Laplante. This is in two flats. It is in 6-8 time. It is a great intro piece to a uh, triple meter. It does have a lot of staggered entrances, so... Um, it, the, the students are going to have to count their parts and know that, you know, the flutes and trumpets don't necessarily play together anymore. So it's starting to build independence with those types of um, instruments. Uh, it does have some fermatas and tempo changes. The clarinets and trumpets are split into two parts. Uh, there are six percussion parts. The bells double the flute. So that is not a vital one if you are short on percussionists. Um, 
It is playable with four players, and it shows up in Beginning Band Volume 1. Number three, and I know some people are already starting to gripe, Anasazi by John Edmondson. Um, and I, I'll just go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off. A lot of people don't like this piece because the low brass and reeds basically play two notes the entire time. Now, I chose to do this this year because I had a very weak trombone, baritone, and tuba section. And with this, it really solidified the two different partials. So it really did help them with that, and they needed something that was a little bit more simplistic. However, all of my students want to play this piece because it's mysterious, and it's a very good kind of like way to trick students into playing lyrical. So, you know, it's you play what you want to play. Don't let anybody else uh, intimidate you. Uh, it is in two flats, but it is in uh, G minor-ish. Um, it's lyrical and mysterious. It does have um, historical connection because I think it was the tribe of Anasazi that this was modeled after. Um, it does have accidentals. So it's a, it's a good introduction into that as well. The clarinets and trumpets are split into two parts. And then here's my part about a very boring low brass and reed part that I had talked about earlier. There are four percussion parts and the bells double the flute again. Uh, it is playable with two or three players, and actually you could probably get away with just doing two if, you, if you're really short on percussionists, because the woodblock and tambourine, I believe, are um, could be played by one person. And this is in the uh, beginning band, Volume 1. And not all of these are going to come from the Teaching Music Through Performance um, books, but the first three just happen to be. Number four, Ancient Stone Circles I, uh, by Robert Buckley. I discovered this one from the Growing Band Director podcast, which I highly suggest uh, that podcast if you are not familiar with it. There is so much good information with that, and they're doing a great job. So uh, check that out if you haven't done that yet. Uh, this is in three flats, and it's a C minor-ish. Um, it's mysterious, and it also has a cinematic feel. Um, so it's just got a different kind of energy to it than a lot of grade one pieces. Uh, there's another historical connection and imagery because it's based off of Stonehenge. So your students can kind of, uh, you know, start to put uh, imagery and, and stuff like that through their playing. It has a trombone gliss quite a few times in it. So if you've got a good trombone section or you're trying to recruit trombone players, this is a piece to look at. The flute, clarinet, alto, and trumpet are split into two parts. There are eight percussion parts, okay, and it's playable with four or five players. Number five, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Andalusia by Victor Lopez. Uh, this has one flat, and then it changes key to two flats. So that, that's something that does not show up a lot in grade one music, but this is a this is a really good introduction to it. It is a Spanish march, and there's everybody's on one part, so it's a really good piece to uh, introduce a Spanish march, or if you haven't done marches at all, you know, this is a good way to do that, and it, um, with everybody being on one part, you know, strength in numbers, and it, it does not sound like a grade one march. It is, it is a very good, well-written march. Um, single eighth notes on upbeats for some, so you have a lot of and, and, and things going on, and it's not just the horns. Uh, it does have a DS Alcoda, so you want to make sure that your students know that. It has eight percussion parts, and the castanets part is incredible. So um, you want to have a strong player on castanets and snare, and of course bass and crash, but uh, you can get away with playing that with four or five players. Number six, another march, Castles and Kings by Bruce Pearson. This is in two flats. It is uh, flute, clarinet, alto, and trumpet are on two parts. Uh, the trombone and baritone part is different from the tuba. And I think the tenor sax is with the trombones, and the bass clarinet and barry sax are with the tubas. So it's starting to build independence with those low voices. There are seven percussion parts, and it also comes with an advanced snare drum. 
So if you've got a really rocking uh, percussionist that needs a little bit more of a challenge, it comes with um, that that extra extra piece. And I believe, I don't have it right in front of me, the regular snare drum part is just quarter notes and eighth notes. And then the advanced snare drum starts to do the one eighth, two sixteenth rhythm in there. So that one and a two and a three. Um, playable with three or four players. Most marches are, are built that way. Number seven, Core of Discovery by William Owens. This has um, two key changes and it's a slow, fast, slow. So the fast part is in two flats, then it slows down and we go into three flats and then it goes back to the fast part and it goes back to two flats. Um, has historical connections with that as well. And the clarinet, alto and trumpet are two, two parts. And uh, there are some Devisi parts throughout um, that are just kind of sprinkled into the other instruments. There are eight percussion parts with this, and it also comes with an advanced snare drum option if you've got an advanced percussionist. It is playable with five or six part or five or six people. Next is a crowd favorite and a, um, a student favorite. This is Creepy Crawlies by Michael Story. It is in three flats. It is in C minor. It is a novelty piece. It's got some extended techniques that the students will enjoy doing. You get to stomp your feet. The brass get to do some mouthpiece buzzing to um, imitate the, the flies buzzing around and everything. Everybody's on one part and five percussion parts available, playable by three or four players. Number nine, this is one of my favorites, Declaration and Dance by Larry Clark. This is in uh, two flats and it's a much faster tempo than most um, grade one pieces. Uh, everybody gets the melody, which means you can practice the melody in unison and then you can slowly work up the tempo with that. It does have some repeated sections that are not in a first and second ending, which I believe are much harder to catch. So it's uh, something you'll you'll definitely, you know, want your students to start, uh, you know, circling the repeat signs in both sets of repeat signs so they know where to go back to. There are 11 percussion parts, and it's playable with five or six players, and this is in the volume three. Uh, teaching music through performance. So it's not in the beginning bands or the, the middle school ones. This actually shows up in like the high school version ones. And it's uh, only a grade one. Number 10, Glorioso, Robert W. Smith, who just recently passed away. Um, this is in two flats and it's another fast, uh, fast tempo piece, uh, 152 beats per minute. For some reason, I did not put the BPMs for the last piece, but this one is at 152. It is a fanfare and procession, so it's a good introduction into that style. Uh, there are one, one part, one per part for all the instruments with some Devisi, and then eight percussion parts playable with four or five players, and this is in the uh, beginning band volume one catalog. Number 11, Incantation and Ritual by Brian Balmages. This is in three flats. It's in C minor. It has a slow or slower 84 beats per minute and then it speeds up to 158. Almost doubles it. The clarinet and trumpet are in two parts and then occasional Devisi with the other parts. The low, voice, the low voices are homophonic, meaning they all have the same rhythm, but not necessarily the same notes. So it's a good, good piece to work on independence with your low voices. Uh, there are 10 percussion parts. There are all kinds of percussion parts spread out through there. Thankfully, um, it's playable with, you know, four or five players, because um, a lot of, a lot of those parts um, are, a lot of those parts can be played by one person. Uh, this shows up in the Beginning Band Volume 1 catalog, and this is also in the Curtain Up Complete Concert Developing Band series, which if you saw my Beginning Band um, video, I think there were two, maybe even three of these, these um, 
complete concerts. And I'll go into to more of that later, but it's basically four pieces um, and it's $110 or something like that. But this is in the Developing Band Volume 1 by FJH Music. Number 12, Manchester March by John Edmondson. This comes out of the, and I forgot to put this in here, the Beginning Band Book Volume 1 by John Edmondson and Ann McGinty. Uh, it, it's just a standard um, cookie cutter march, but it's got a pretty good melody with it. Uh, starts off in two flats and then in the trio, you know, following tradition, adds a third flat. Um, as I said, it's a very traditional march. The clarinets and trumpets are in two parts. Um, it is starting to introduce tension and release. So you have some um, notes that clash and then resolve and, and starting to introduce that stuff. Um, very, very basic percussion parts, bell, snare, and bass. Um, I typically write in a crash part that follows very closely to the bass part. And you can also write a timpani part if you needed to with that as well. Um, but the percussion is played with, you can do it with just two players if you need to, because the bell part um, is the flute part. Number 13, Night Fury, Carol Britton Chambers. Uh, this is definitely on the higher end of a grade one. I think according to the publishers, it is a grade one. This is really flirting with grade two. So if you've got a um, a band that you're not quite ready to go into grade two, but they need a little bit of a push, this is where I would I would start to look at. It's only in one flat. Um, it's another fast tempo, 144 to 148 beats per minute. It has 4-4 four, four with some 3-4 times sprinkled in. So it's not like a 3-4 section and a, I'm sorry, a 4-4 four, four section and a 3-4 section. You just have a few 3-4 uh, measures thrown in there. Um, clarinet and trumpet are in two parts, and the first clarinet does go over the break in the middle section of this. It does do the dotted quarter eighth note rhythm. It has nine percussion parts that is playable with four or five players. Number 14, Quest for the Throne by Larry Clark. Um, my big, what, what uh, drew me to this piece is it's in four flats. Um, and I couldn't find my score. I was at home when I did this, and I thought I had brought all my scores home, but I didn't. Um, but I did do a literature review of this, which is episode 22, and I'll put a link in the description for this. Um, but this is a wonderful piece that is in four flats, which you never see in this, in this grade range. Um, so I appreciate Larry Clark for doing that, and it's a, it's a, great, a great piece, especially with the key signature. Number 15, Sakura by Michael Story. This is in two flats, but it does have a lot of accidentals in it. Um, and if you are using the Habits um, beginning band book, the green book, the, um, the melody Sakura, which I think is line 67, um, the melody is the exact same melody as it is in this book. So I, I use this as a great transition from playing it out of the book. Hey, here's a piece that follows this melody. Um, it's a clarinet feature. So if you've got a really strong clarinet section, this is a great piece to do. Only one per part, six percussion parts, um, and it's playable with four or five. And this is in the beginning band volume one catalog. Number 16. No grade one list is is full without a, or is complete without a Randall Standridge piece. And this is Skygazer Fanfare. This is in three flats. Obviously it's a fanfare. It does have syncopation. Okay, so if your students are ready to start doing the eighth note, quarter note, eighth note rhythms, this is the piece to look at. Uh, it does have a DS Alcoda and um, kind of standard Standridge music. It has a ton of percussion in it. Um, you could probably get away with playing it with five or six players. Though. Number 17, Valor by Larry Clark. This is in uh, two flats and then follows tradition, adding a third flat at the 
um, at the trio, one per part, and uh, it does have repeats with the second time only. So you can start to uh, experiment with the different colors and everything, and the students can start to hear it. Um, six percussion parts, playable by three or four players. And if you don't like Valor March um, specifically, Larry Clark has written a bunch of grade one marches that are all, you know, very similar in difficulty. And you just find one that you really like the, the melody to and that clicks with you. And there's plenty to look at there. All right. So as the title suggests, there are a couple bonus ones in here. And um, if you're trying to build a library, I have come from programs that, you know, don't have a lot of money and you need the most bang for your buck. So as I had mentioned with the incantation and ritual piece, um, this is what the Curtain Up uh, Developing Band Volume 1 um, setup is. So if, if, you, if you buy this, this package instead of just incantation and ritual, you get all four of these pieces for, like I said, around $100. And um, it says it's grade one and a half on there, but I really think some of these are on the higher end of grade one, possibly even grade two. Uh, for instance, I teach in Tennessee, Jubilations by William Owens is a grade two on our list. Um, but you get all four of these pieces, Jubilations, which is an overture, December Sky, which is a lyrical, Stone Age Stomp, which is a, another one that the, the kids really like. It's a novelty piece. And then Incantation and Ritual. So you kind of get a full program with just, just those four pieces. And four pieces for 100 bucks, even if it's 120 It's probably gone up since I bought it. Um, you really can't beat that. And then here is my full list. Um, so if you're looking to build a library, looking to to do anything in grade one. Here's a, a great a great list to get started with. So if your favorite grade ones did not show up on this, please let me know. I'm always um, interested in, in learning about new pieces and doing new pieces. Um, if there's one of these that you've had a lot of success with, let us know. If there's one of these that you absolutely hate, uh, let us know that as well. So this uh, if you've made it this far, like and subscribe, send this to somebody that you think will benefit from it, and we'll see you next time.